Hey, Mr. P here. In this video, we're going to talk all about the minutia patterns uh, that are unique to fingerprinting. So in the last video, we talked about the big kind of holistic fingerprint patterns and the big classes of fingerprint patterns, those being whirl, arch, and um, loop. Now we're going to dive into the actual intricacies of each of the fingerprints, um, which are called minutia patterns. Like you can see in this particular image, here are a couple of the ridge patterns we're obviously going to talk about um, that belong to the minutia patterns class or classification system. Um, things like bifurcation and ridge enclosure, short ridge, spur, core, delta, ridge ending, island, uh, crossover, bridge, that kind of thing. We're going to talk about those um, and we're going to talk about each of them and what they are and what they look like uh, right now. So when you start to analyze a fingerprint obviously you need to identify them as kind of the holistic print pattern that being a whirl loop or arch but then while looking at them you have to look at the or dive in deeper than that because there are only three different kind of classifications of fingerprints those being whirl loop and arch and so if you were trying to identify somebody based on whether or not they have an arch loop or whirl then you know you're you're going to be able to kind of identify a person or or group some people together based on this this is a, a form of class evidence right um, you can get a particular class of people or a different you know an individual group of people but in order to actually like consider all aspects of the fingerprint more information is needed than the basic fingerprint pattern okay in order to identify a person on their fingerprint you have to analyze the minutia patterns of that particular fingerprint. Okay, an examiner needs to know if he or she is viewing a partial print, multiple prints, prints from right or left hand, or the full print. Right, left and right prints are not mere images of each other, and so just because you might have a loop on your right index and a loop on your left index, they are not um, at all mere images of each other. Okay, every single fingerprint on all ten fingers and all all ten toes are unique to that particular fingerprint um, and that unique finger or toe and so all of them are different you don't have any mere imaging of your fingerprints on your hands every individual including identical twins has a unique ridge characteristic called minutia and we talked about that in the first video I believe um, or specifically the second video um, each person even identical twins that share the same exact DNA signature have individual fingerprints that are unique to them because fingerprints are developed not based on DNA code but based on environmental conditions uh, specifically while the embryo is developing in the embryonic fluid okay recognizing minutia in difference uh, or in the differences between ridges their relative number their location on specific fingerprints is called fingerprint identification and that is all about fingerprint analysis or the analysis of a particular fingerprint okay there are about 150 individual ridge characteristics on the average full fingerprint. So you will be doing a bunch of fingerprinting in class. When you pull a or lift a particular fingerprint, a full fingerprint, from a piece of glass or from a smooth surface, you should be able to find 150 individual different ridge characteristics on that particular print. Now, we are probably not at the level, and we are not trained um, at the level of a fingerprint examiner. And so if you don't find 150 individual ridge characteristics on a fingerprint that you are examining in class, it's not a big deal. But you should definitely find 10 to 15. You know, that's roughly 10% of that 150 individual ridge characteristics that are readily available on that particular fingerprint. So prior to the use of the computers and scanners, um, fingerprints were identified by people comparing these ridge patterns and minutia points by hand. And so this was a slow, very tedious process that resulted in many inaccuracies. People were pulling prints and analyzing prints that were on file by hand using magnifying glasses um, and, and basically having to do the things that we have computers to do now. Luckily now we have scanners and computers and online database with online um, software and um, algorithms that are able to calculate distances and angles between key minutia points and it's able to do that over the course of millions of prints in really really quick amounts of time okay and so it has sped up the fingerprint analysis process a bunch 
So what are these minutiae patterns? Um, obviously in that first picture you saw a bunch of different minutiae names that were identified on the fingerprint, but all of the fingerprints and all the minutiae on that particular fingerprint were all kind of hidden. And so all of these are minutiae patterns that are identified by name and picture. So a ridge ending is when you have a ridge pattern that ends at some point in the fingerprint, okay? If you have a particular line, those are the ridges, and if it ends and is not continuous, it would be considered a ridge ending. So for this particular minutia pattern, this is the ridge ending they're referring to. Obviously, this would be a continuous ridge. This would be a continuous ridge. This ridge would be ending at that particular point anywhere within the fingerprint. Now, when you have a really short ridge that is not a dot, we call that an island ridge or a short independent ridge, okay? So if you have this continuous ridge, continuous ridge, continuous ridge, continuous ridge, but you have this real short kind of spurt where you have a ridge that extends for just a little bit, that is a short ridge, otherwise known as an independent ridge or sometimes called an island ridge. Now I'm going to skip down here to this dot or island because it is very similar to this one. Now if that short ridge is really, really short or just a dot, we call that an island or a dot. Okay, sometimes within a fingerprint you'll see all these continuous ridge patterns, all these continuous ridges, but you'll have these individual dots. We call those dots or islands and they are very, very, very short. So do you see the difference? This is a short line, but it is still very much a line. We call that a short ridge. This is a dot or a really, really short um, ridge, and so we call those dots or islands. A bifurcation is when you have one ridge that splits or forks into two. Okay, that's a bifurcation, we call that a fork. Okay, otherwise known as a fork. Now down here, this is kind of like a bifurcation where you have a single line that is forking, but that fork comes back together and then continues on as a single ridge. So you have a single ridge forking, coming back together as a single ridge. We call that a ridge enclosure or a lake or an eye. I like to refer them to or refer to them as an eye, just because if you were to draw, you know, the iris and the pupil, it would make a kind of like an eye shape. Okay. A spur or hook is when you have individual continuous ridges, but you have a kind of a spur or you have a short kind of like bifurcation, but that bifurcation doesn't stay continuous. It just forks off and then stops. You also can have a bridge or a crossover, which is when you have continuous ridge lines or continuous ridges, but the continuous parallel ridges are connected with a diagonal bifurcation on one of the ridges, but it also comes together um, to the next or adjacent continuous ridge. And so it bridges between these two or crosses over between those two uh, continuous ridge patterns. A delta um, is one of those key signatures on some fingerprints. Not all fingerprints have a delta, but the delta is when you have kind of this triangular shape. Now deltas can be bifurcations depending on where the bifurcation is on the particular fingerprint, but the most common area that we call a delta are these triangular shaped ridge patterns. Now when we get into actual further fingerprint analysis, you'll see that the delta kind of is, in a lot of cases, the foundation of the fingerprint, but the, but the delta is when you kind of have these individual ridge patterns which are coming in continuously that kind of converge and point up into this, this delta triangular shape. A core is basically the central area of a fingerprint, depending on if it's a loop, arch, or whirl, okay? they are the the center of the fingerprint okay so that obviously is the foundation it's it's basically the core or the center of each of the fingerprints double bifurcation is just like our um, original bifurcation only you're gonna have two or more um, individual ridges that kind of fork off of a main continuous ridge this would be a double bifurcation, and then you have a trifurcation where instead of it forking and going two ways from a continuous ridge, it has three, so tri means three. Trifurcation is when one ridge splits into three 
uh, individual ridges. Okay, these are all minutia patterns. You're going to see all of these minutia patterns within fingerprinting and within fingerprint analysis, especially when we start working on fingerprint analysis in class. Okay, so if we look at this particular section of a fingerprint, this is not a full fingerprint. In fact, this is a very small partial portion of a fingerprint. You can see that it is obviously a loop. It's looping this way, opening to the right of this screen. And so if we were to look at this and try to identify individual types of minutia patterns within this particular portion of a fingerprint, you would see that this is a crossover, okay? This ridge pattern, this ridge is continuous. These are continuous, but there's actually kind of a cross right here. We would call that a crossover. This is the core. Remember, the core is that centralized area of each of the fingerprints. Since this is a loop, this would be the core of the loop. This is a bifurcation. Notice you have a single uh, ridge line that forks into two. This is a ridge ending. Okay, You have ridge that stops. Technically, this would be a ridge ending as well. Okay, This is a continuous. This is a continuous. This would be a ridge ending. This would be a ridge ending. You could also call this individual small line one of those short ridges. Okay. This is an island. It's one of those really, really short, almost like a dot, right? This would be a longer, short ridge. This would be the delta. Remember, delta was when you have continuous lines that come in and form this triangular shape. That's a delta. And then you have a pore that I just wanted, not really minutia patterns, but I wanted to point those out. When you notice these little white dots, that are on the, the surface or on the interior of each of these ridges. All these little white dots, those would be the pores that are located on the surface of your skin. Those would travel down into the internal of your skin tissue layers, which are connected to sweat glands. And those are the pores that your sweat would be um, excreted onto your skin surface from. And that's what gives you the ability to, or allows you to leave fingerprints in the first place. Okay, so each of these are types of minutia. These are not the only minutia patterns. This is just one example where those minutia patterns are easily identified. If you looked around, you'd obviously be able to find more minutia patterns. Um, like this is a bifurcation, single that splits into two, right? And the last thing we need to talk about are types of fingerprints. So we talked about the big classes of fingerprints in the last video. This video was all about minutia patterns, but now types of fingerprints You'll notice that these are three different types of fingerprints. They're all obviously fingerprints. This one is a fingerprint impression that was placed in soft clay. So it gives you kind of the negative reveal of the fingerprint. This one is a fingerprint that was placed on a surface with either ink or blood in this case. And then this is a fingerprint that was obviously left by an individual, but had to be dusted in order for that fingerprint to become um, visible. Okay, this one is obviously visible without fingerprint dust. This one, however, needed to be dusted in order for the fingerprint to become um, visible. Okay, this type of fingerprint is called patent fingerprints. Patent fingerprints are visible prints left at the scene on a smooth surface when blood, ink, or some other liquid comes in contact with the hands and is transferred to that surface. So if I committed a crime and I had blood on my hands and then I touched a wall, or a table, and I left my fingerprint in blood, that would be a patent fingerprint. It would be shown and would be obvious to individual CSI technicians because of the fact that it was transferred in blood. That is a patent fingerprint. A plastic fingerprint are actual indentations left in some soft material like clay, putty, or wax. So if, for instance, there was a really soft, malleable uh, material at a crime scene and I put my hand in it and it left this soft impression or this impression of my fingerprint in the soft clay, that would be a plastic fingerprint. Again, you would not need to dust that in order to get a good signature of that particular fingerprint. And then the last one, which is probably the most common form of fingerprint, are called latent fingerprints. They are not visible to the unaided eye. They're caused by the transfer of oils and other body secretions that are naturally on your skin onto a surface but they have to be dusted. Fingerprint powder has to be added to them in order to make them visible.
to the unaided eye. They are not naturally visible to the unaided eye. Okay, They can be made visible or lifted by dusting with powders or by using a chemical reaction. We will do some of this um, powder dusting for fingerprints to make latent prints visible in class in a variety of labs. Um, but I wanted you to be aware of what the difference between patent, plastic, and latent fingerprints are. These are all the different types of fingerprints. Once you have these identified and you have them lifted and you need to start analyzing them, that's when the minutia patterns come in. Minutia patterns are going to allow us to look at the in-depth signature of a, a fingerprint and that's going to allow us to actually analyze, interpret the fingerprints, and make some conclusions, draw some conclusions about whether or not the fingerprint left at a crime scene is unique and does it match an individual person. Can that fingerprint be used as individual evidence either for or against a particular individual? That's where the minutia patterns come in. Okay, that's all for this particular lecture. Bring your questions to class. See ya.